I am. Mr. Taru, in this math lesson, we're going to do three examples of finding the angle of intersection between a line and a plane. So if you want to check out the description, you will find our three timestamps so that you can jump ahead to those, uh, any one of those examples that you choose or just watch the whole video. You're also going to find a link to my playlist involving all of the lessons I've done so far uh, that deal with vectors. Our first example is going to be given uh, the equation of our plane in Cartesian format and our equation of our line in three space. That's going to be our most straightforward problem because we can just pull that normal vector um, out of the equation of our plane in Cartesian format. Our second example, the equation of the plane is going to be given to us in vector format. So we're going to have to look at that, take out our two noncollinear parallel directional vectors and find the cross product between those two so that we can find our normal vector to the plane. And our third example, we're going to be given an equation of a line and a plane, but there's going to be some unknown constants as coefficients, and we're going to solve for that unknown constant such that our, you know, we want to create a situation where the line and the plane are parallel. So what do, we, what do we have going on here? The angle theta between a line parallel to vector u and a plane with a normal vector n is given by. So the angle between a line. We're only going to be working with the direction of that line in the format of a vector. We're going to pull that vector out of the equation of a line that's parallel. It doesn't have to necessarily be the line, um, but parallel to that line. And that angle theta is given by the formula arc sine is equal to the absolute value of the dot product between vector u and vector n over the uh, magnitude of vector u times the magnitude of vector n. This formula is with especially here with the absolute value function making sure that we get a positive answer for theta is going to give us an answer between 0 and 90 degrees. Uh, since we're using arc sine to find this theta, um, arc sine is a working as an inverse trig function gives us answers between negative 90 degrees and positive 90 degrees. Well, we just want those positive answers. Now we've already done videos about the angle between vectors, the angle between lines, the angle between planes, and all of those formulas used arc cosine, not arc sine. Well, why is that? And by the way, if you want to use arc sine, you're going to, have to take that answer and subtract it from 90 degrees to find theta. Well, the issue here is that we're going to be working with the normal vector to the plane, the perpendicular vector to the plane, and this uh, vector u, which is parallel to the line. Well, you see here, if we're using the normal vector to the plane and a directional vector for the line, if we use our cosine, which, let me take a little bit of this diagram off so we can make this a little bit clearer. And I do apologize for the background hum of the air conditioner, but I'm in Florida in the summer, and that just means it's a necessity. If I extend the bottom here a little bit longer. I'm going to create a rectangle and make a parallel congruent top to this. Drop down a perpendicular for, uh, or a, basically I'm making a rectangle, so I'm going to basically I'm trying to without, you know, right edge, right, uh, uh, without squares and straight edges, make a rectangle here. And so we have sort of two, represent two representations of basically uh, vector n here and, uh, whatever this line is, which is parallel to the plane, um, given us theta. If you're working with the magnitude of n and the magnitude of u, you're basically when you're dealing with cosine, it would, be, it would be from the adjacent leg to the hypotenuse of our triangle. Well, that's going to give us an angle, but it's not going to be the angle between the line and the plane. It's going to give us the angle between the line and the normal vector. So if you do use arc cosine to find an angle measure, you're going to have to Subtract that from 90 degrees to find out what theta is because this is the normal vector to the plane. It's perpendicular. This is a right angle. Or you can see that you have uh, basically a couple of parallel sides. And when you have parallel sides being cut by a transversal, a little uh, old school geometry here, your alternate interior angles are going to be equal. So if this is angle theta, then this is also going to be equal to that same measure. Uh, therefore, we could basically call it theta. And from theta, we have opposite over hypotenuse. Well, that is our sine function. So I'm just explaining a little bit of geometry here as to why this formula now is using arc sine all of a sudden. OK. So our first example here says, we're going to calculate the angle between the line x minus 2 over 3 equals 2y equals 1 minus 2 times z. 
our angle, um, our equation of a line given in Cartesian format for a line that's in three space, and we have a plane in Cartesian format. Well, I say this in every video just to make sure that, you know, I don't know if you guys are watching those of you, uh, the, you know, you that are watching this video right now see all of my vector lessons, but the equation of a plane dealing with a or using a normal vector r dot n equals uh, position vector a dot with n position vector for a known point on the plane the of course the components of our normal vector we're going to know all three components of each of these vectors that gives us our constant in this case four and here vector r is a position vector for any general point on the plane coordinate x y r you dot that with n, you're just going to multiply the components along the x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis and add them up. So I can look at this equation and just say that for a plane, the normal vector is our coefficients, 2, negative 3, 1. Now, we need to get the directional vector out of this Cartesian format for the equation of our plane and we are looking at x minus 2 of, uh, over 3 is equal to lambda. That's going to give us that x is equal to multiplying by 3 and adding by 2. We have, uh, well, let's say 2 plus 3 lambda. We have 2y is also equal to lambda. Solving this for y, we have y is equal to 0 plus, and we're going to divide by 2, 1 half lambda, and I'm showing the initial sort of like an x-coordinate of a known point plus how quickly you're basically moving from that point in terms of lambda. We have, and I'm, so I'm including the zero because there's no addition of a constant here in this little expression. So it's, we have an initial um, known point which has got the x-coordinate of two, the y-coordinate of zero, and then we're moving at this sort of pace of one-half lambda away from that initial y-coordinate. And then finally we have one minus 2z equals lambda. Subtract both sides by 1. Negative 2z minus 1 plus lambda. Divide by negative 2 when we have z is equal to 1 half minus 1 half lambda. Now I'm going to erase this because all I really need is the directional vector for our line. So let's call that to match our notes vector u and for our line vector u is equal to the coefficients of lambda. So we're looking at 3, 1 half, and negative 1 half. Double check my notes just to make sure I didn't do something careless while I was talking and thinking at the same time. Good. Now, <clears throat> we've pulled our directional vector out of the equation of our line. But I don't want to work through fractions for the rest of this problem, so I'm just going to simply increase the magnitude of this vector by 2. That's not going to change the angle between vector u and vector n. And just for, just for good notes, we're going to say, even though it's still basically a directional vector for the line, I'm going to say that 2 times vector u is equal to uh, 6, 1, and negative 1. Okay, time to find that angle. So we're going to use this formula that the angle between the line and the plane is equal to arc sine of the absolute value of the dot product between u, the directional vector for the line, and the normal vector for the plane. So the dot product between 6, 1, and negative 1, and 2, negative 3, 1 over the magnitude of vector u, in this case really it's the magnitude of vector 2 times u, we have 6 squared plus 1 squared plus negative 1 squared times the magnitude of vector n, our normal vector, to the plane, 2 squared plus negative 3 squared plus 1 squared, absolute value, okay, making a bit of a mess of this now, Okay, so theta is equal to the arc sine of 12 plus negative 3 is, of course, 9, minus 1 is 8, over the square root. We have 36 
1 is 37. Now we're looking at the square root of 38. And 4 plus 9 is 13. Plus 1 is 14. And again, don't forget that we're doing an absolute value here, but of course, this is a positive um, value. And theta comes out to be, putting this into your calculator in degree mode, we get 20.294 degrees. And that's our first example for finding the angle between a line and a plane. Second example coming up right now. Na -na 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 -na. So for our second example, we're going to calculate the angle between the line x minus 2 over 3 equals y equals 1 minus z over 2. And the plane, this is a pretty ugly looking format for the vector form of a plane. But we're going to break this down. It's not quite as scary as it looks. Maybe, depending on your experience with these problems, you already can pull out the two non-collinear vectors, but I'll make sure that we understand how. As far as this equation of a line in um, Cartesian format here, a number of times now in my videos, I've been breaking this down into um, individual parametric equations to make it absolutely clear. You can see what is the initial x-coordinate and basically that um, corresponding component of the directional vector. But I'm also going to say, you know, you've done enough of these now, you're probably realizing I'm maybe over-explaining these for you. Um, know that the only way to get these three parts of this um, Cartesian equation together is by first setting um, all the components of x, y, and z you know, equal to lambda. And if you do enough of these, you'll start realizing that you can identify without moving out of this Cartesian format the initial coordinate or a known coordinate on this line and the directional vector. Uh, you can't do that though unless each of the coefficients of x, y, and z are equal to 1, not negative 1. But if you write it like this and just see it as we have x minus x sub 1 over the component um, portion of our directional vector u uh, that's going in the same direction, you can see that in the denominator, equals y minus, well of course our y, general y component, uh, excuse me, the general y coordinate for our any general point on the plane, minus the y-coordinate of our known point over u sub 2 equals z minus z sub 1 over u sub 3. So, if I realize that if I have my equation of the line in this format, x, y, and z, I can just pull them out of the numerators and find that known point, and the denominators are the components of our directional vector u. So, if I write this as x minus 2 over 3 equals y minus 0 over 1, there's no denominator of course, but there really is, you're dividing by 1. Now here the coefficient of z is negative 1, not positive 1. So I'm going to factor a negative 1 out of the numerator and basically just apply it to the denominator or I'm going to multiply top and bottom by negative 1, however you want to say it. But we're going to get z minus 1 over negative 2. So our line has the directional vector of 3, 1, and negative 2. So if you've been watching a number of my videos now, you can pull out that directional vector from our line in Cartesian format a bit faster. You may see the, this form of an uh, equation of a plane before, or maybe not. Um, what I'm going to do here, and I'm going to just go quiet and speed up this video, but, and you, again, if you work with these, you can start to immediately see what the initial point is and the um, sort of, well, I've already said vector u, so maybe let's call it, uh, I don't know, w and z, the two directional vectors for this um, uh, plane, but I'm going to distribute the components of i, j, and k, kind of group those together, and so you can see absolutely how I'm saying that this is a known point on the um, plane and these are, are two um, parallel non-collinear directional vectors or gradient vectors.
miscopied my original problem, so that should be plus, plus, plus. And I miscopied that. Just want to make sure I don't have any mistakes like I, well, did with my copy error here. Uh, so just want to make sure that, uh, you know, don't pre-done these notes. I don't want to do some small copy or, you know, say that I inadvertently dropped my two there. I'm really prone to that, but my classroom, my kids get to help keep me on track. So distributing those coefficients um, of vector i, j, and k, and expanding all this out, you can group all of the, the three terms together that basically don't have an alpha or a beta. Group your three terms that have an alpha. Group your three terms that have a beta. And then you can basically just take instead of a sum of component vectors, just write this in a column component form. So vector r is equal to 0, 1, and 3 as our known point, plus negative 1, negative 1, 2 times vector alpha plus 4, 1, and negative 1 times vector beta, and now we have our two directional vectors that we're about to find the cross product between. And uh, let's just call this, eh, let's call this vector A and vector B. And by the way, <clears throat> instead, you don't really need to write all three of these lines, you can see it. Vector I has a zero, basically there's no plus a constant in this parentheses. So our known point has a coordinate of 0, our coefficient of alpha is negative 1, and our coefficient of beta is 4. Now, uh, with our vector, vector component j, the direction on the y-axis, we have an initial known point of 1. We have a coefficient for alpha of negative 1 and 1 for beta. This is actually much quicker than expanding this all out and just showing the algebra, but in case anybody out there wants it. And then finally with k, we have 3, 2, negative 1, 3, 2, negative 1. So this is a bit of overkill, but just in case you needed it. So, we're going to get this out of the way. Make some room for a scratch work. We're going to find that cross product. So, vector A crossed with vector B is going to be equal to, set up a little 3 by 3 matrix here, I, J, K, negative 1, negative 1, and 2, 4, 1 and negative 1, and we have that this is equal to the determinant of column row out for i, negative 1, 2, and 1, negative 1, minus, plus, minus the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix row and column out for j, negative 1, 2, 4, negative 1, now plus, back to addition, or positive, row and column out for k. So we get that determinant of this 2 by 2 matrix, which is going to give us a coefficient of um, k for our cross product, negative 1, negative 1. So we are looking at 1 minus 2 minus negative 1 times negative 1 is 1 minus 8, plus, going down to the right, negative 1, and then we're subtracting our product as we go up to the right. Uh, we have negative 1 minus negative 4, which is negative 1 plus 4, as our component for vector j. So our cross product vector, our normal vector to the plane, is equal to negative 1, that's negative 7, but there's negative out here, so we're looking at negative 1, positive 7, and 3. So we, to find the angle between this plane and that line, we are going to find the angle using our normal vector, negative 1, 7, 3, and vector u, our vector parallel to the line of 3, 1, and negative 2. So, theta is equal to the arc 
sine of the absolute value, the dot product, negative 1, 7, and 3, dotted with 3, 1, and negative 2. If this were the cross product of not a cross b, but b cross a, this would be 1, negative 7, and negative 3. But again, our absolute value function is not only going to take care of that geometry that I was talking about in the um, beginning of this problem, but <clears throat> it's also going to take care of, um, basically, it's not important what order you do that cross product in. The absolute value is going to take care of that negative if it comes up, that opposite vector if it comes up, and we'll still get the right answer. So that's a magnet, that's a the dot product between n and u. Now we're going to talk about the magnitude of n, which is negative 1 squared plus 7 squared plus 3 squared times the, put that up too soon, didn't I? Times the magnitude of vector u, which is 3 squared plus 1 squared plus negative 2 squared. So we have arc sine of dot product, multiply right each of these components and add them. So we're looking at negative 3 plus 7 is 4. And then we have minus 6 is negative 2. So the absolute value of negative 2 over 49 and 9 is 58. Now it's 59. So the square root of 59. And our magnitude for vector u is 9 and 4 is 13 and 14. And the arc sine of basically 2 over the square root of 59 times the square root of 14 is equal to 3.90, excuse me, 3.990 degrees. My kids have to make sure they round off correctly to the three decimal places or the third decimal place for all of their problems. That is the end of our third, second example, excuse me. Third example coming up right now. Na, 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 na. Na, 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 na. It's our last example. We're going to determine the values for which the line, the values of k, for which the line x over 3 equals k times y equals k minus z, and the plane 2k minus 1 times x plus 2k times y plus 2z, excuse me, plus 1z is equal to 4k or parallel. That sounds a bit challenging. Um, I did a little bit of us a favor here trying to make this a bit more approachable by giving us the equation of our plane in Cartesian format. But what's the geometry between a plane and a line being parallel? You can kind of think of it as back going to a geometry theorem that said two lines that are perpendicular to the same line are parallel. Now that's for two-dimensional geometry, so we're assuming that they're in the same plane. but if we find a perpendicular to the plane, the normal vector, and then make sure that that normal vector is perpendicular to a directional vector for um, the line, well, if we make sure that those two vectors are perpendicular, then we have created a line which is perpendicular, excuse me, not perpendicular, but parallel to the plane. Well, what is it that we've learned in our vectors to use to determine or check whether two vectors are perpendicular? The dot product has to be equal to zero. So if we can set it up so that the dot product between the dot product, scalar product, inner product of vector n and vector u, if we get that to be equal to zero, then those vectors are perpendicular. And um, with your cross product, if your cross product is equal to zero, then those two vectors are going in the same direction. Just a little footnote in case you might need that for another problem. So we are going to, understanding this, and knowing that we want to make the directional vector for the line perpendicular to the normal vector to the plane, which is perpendicular to the plane, uh, therefore giving us a line and plane which are parallel. Well, then 
we're going to get those two vectors that we need out of these equations and then just set up the dot product and make sure that that is going to equal zero. Now, with the equation of our plane here in yellow, it is coefficient of x, coefficient of y, and a coefficient of z equals to a constant. So this is in um, Cartesian format. And so like I showed you before, as long as this is in Cartesian format, the coefficients of x, y, and z are the components of the normal vector. So for our plane, the normal vector is 2k minus 1, negative 2k, and positive 1. Now for our line, okay, well, let's do what we did before and rewrite these three terms so that it's x minus x sub 1 over u sub 1 equals y minus y sub 1 over u sub 2 equals z minus z sub 1 over u sub 3. Get it um, into that basically Cartesian form that allows us to just see the components of the, or the coordinates of the known point, a known point, and that directional vector. So we're looking at, in white, keep this nice and color coded, x minus 0 over 3 is equal to, now I need this coefficient of y to be 1, so I'm going to bring this coefficient of k down and bring it as a division of 1 half. So we have y minus 0 over 1 over k, right? When you divide by fractions, you multiply by reciprocal. y divided by 1 over k is yk, and we have to factor a negative 1 out of here. So we're looking at where this is k minus z over 1. We need to change this order. When you change the order of subtraction, you get an opposite answer. That's going to give us z minus k over negative 1. So our line has a directional vector of 3, 1 over k, and negative 1. And we're going to make sure that the dot product between these two vectors is equal to 0, just making sure I haven't made a copy error like that previous example, and we are good to go. Okay, so <clears throat> as long as we make sure that the dot product between vector n and vector u is equal to 0, we will have those two vectors perpendicular, or the line is perpendicular to the normal vector, which is perpendicular to the plane, thus the line is parallel to the plane, and we're going to get a pretty, actually, straightforward algebra problem here. 3 times 2 is 6, okay? 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. Po negative 2 um, times positive 1 is negative 2. But the, and the k's are going to cancel out because k divided by k is equal to 1, so we're looking at negative 2, and then plus 1 is equal to 0. We're looking at negative... I made this problem to come out nice and easy, and that was going to be a decimal or a fraction. So we have 6k minus 6 is equal to 0. We have 6k is equal to 6 and we have k is equal to 1. So as long as k is equal to 1, here we have a line and a parallel, which are, <clears throat> we have a line and a plane, which are parallel. That's in my last example. I'm Mr. True. Bam! Go do your homework.